What is the one missing piece that most likely you have, you have not read about in all those parenting manuals when food time is a big chapter? If you're still here looking for answers, probably you missed this piece. So listen up. Now, if there's anybody with traditional parenting style and authoritarian, like me, 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 I'm the parent, you should be listening to me because I know best. I know that for you, it might be a huge trigger to hear me talk like this. And please know, I'm not saying like, just let your kids do whatever, whenever, let them eat ice cream in the middle of the night and for breakfast if they want. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that whenever you notice you're fighting for control, it's because. So what might be a solution specifically for mealtimes is. Hi and welcome to the Zen Superman podcast. Today will be about meal times, the food. Did the food time turn into a power struggle with your child? Do you have a picky eater at home who maybe has like a list of three favorite foods and everything else they just like gag, spit out or vomit out even if you force them to eat it? How can you turn the family lunches and dinners into a nice calm happy times when your children are open to learning and tasting new things how to do that without forcing the food down their throat let's talk about it hi super mom or super dad <laughs> alena here your mommy tantrum specialist and the founder of the zen super mom system and me and my team have helped hundreds of moms and dads start setting healthy boundaries with calm and this is the first parenting podcast that is not about your kids that shows you why none of the parenting techniques helped you stop yelling at your kids and how to control your emotions from jumping out so that you can be the safe, loving parent you wish you had growing up. This is the Zen Superman podcast. Hi, Supermom. Elena here, your mommy tantrum specialist and the founder of the Zen Supermom system, where me and my team help super busy, super loving supermoms set healthy boundaries with your children without yelling so that your kids feel safe with you and they have beautiful memories growing up. Who wouldn't want that, right? <laughs> and today we will talk about another classic scenario that I hear so often about from moms who come to me for help. Usually one of the top I don't even know. Let's let's count with me. The top list of top situations when you usually lose your calm with kids. In the morning when you're rushing late to get somewhere, get them to school or for you to go to work. Morning routine. Bedtime routine when you're so tired, exhausted, they should be going to sleep. Dragging their feet. When they are hitting you or their siblings or calling names. And then, okay, number four, <laughs> number four that I hear the most often is meal times. It's food. How do I get my child to try new things, eat more variety of foods rather than his or hers like top three or four favorites that they are requiring? And if I give them anything else on the plate, they don't eat it. They are even fine with being hungry, but I know they have to eat. So I'm trying to bribe them. I'm trying to offer different alternatives. So then I end up cooking for hours and then nobody wants to eat it anyway. Anyways, and then I'm so mad because it's organic, homemade from scratch, and I spent so much time, and they just spit it out, vomit it out. <laughs> like nobody's happy. There's so much drama, and meal times turned into a disaster in our homes. It takes one hour for them to take even two bites, and I feel like such a failure. I'm so exhausted. And so then of course the complete like the night time, the evening, when it's supposed to be so nice and loving and for everybody to calm down and relax after a busy day it's actually turning into a worst nightmare so please help that's what i often hear so if that's you my dear mom well, first of all i'm sending you a big hug i know like i'm smiling i'm laughing but just to make it a little bit lighter but i know i know <laughs> how hard that is and how exhausting i can only imagine how exhausting that must feel too so if that's your situation, the good news is you're going to get some help in this podcast. Now, before I go any further, let me start by saying I'm not a nutritionist, not a nutrition specialist. 
I'm not a parenting coach. I'm not a childhood psychologist. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to share with you my experience and also like the research I've done through my studies of trauma, childhood trauma, to share with you what works with our clients, with the women we work with inside the Zen Superman program, because they often can come up with these situations as well. That's, by the way, how why I'm doing this podcast, why I started, because I just see patterns. There are things that are coming up over and over again. And rather than having one on one trauma and coaching sessions with everybody and telling it separately, the same thing to everyone, <laughs> I started doing this podcast because I feel like everybody should know about this. Right. So, so many of us are going through exactly the same things. So this is what I'm going to share with you. Now, with that caveat, with that being said, if it got even to the point when you're having suspicious suspicions that your child is has developed any eating disorder that is even more serious, like anorexia, bulimia, and I don't know what else on top, then please go and search help from a specialist, all right? I'm not a specialist in eating disorders. I want to talk to you if you're a mom, especially of younger children, who is really struggling with getting some variety on their plate. And when you feel like it's it's really like a power struggle, <laughs> trying to get them eat a nice balanced diet, I'm, I want to talk to you. All right. I hope that makes sense. Like what kind of advice that being said also, but just if you have a child with anorexia, bulimia or anything else, like you will get value from this episode because you will understand why those things are happening. And so often knowing why is the first empowering step, really having the awareness why things are going this way then it gives you much more clarity and also strength and courage to take the next steps. Okay. So I think even for you, if, you, if you're the other case, if, uh, if you're a mom of an older child and still struggling, you might find some value in this podcast episode as well. Sounds good for a start. Let's dive in. Let me take a sip of my tea first before I go. So what is the one missing piece? that most likely you have, you have not read about in all those parenting manuals when food time is a big chapter. If you're still here looking for answers, probably you missed this piece. So listen up. If in general, in any situations, if you find out that you're struggling with your kid over anything, including food, it should be a signal for you to get curious. Where is it that my child doesn't feel they have enough control over their lives? And taking an honest look at yourself. Is it maybe because I'm being maybe too much controlling somewhere? Does my child feel like they have enough independence? Do they feel they have enough of free choice? Do they feel they have enough options and power throughout their day to choose what they want and when they want it. Okay. Now, if there's anybody with traditional parenting style and authoritarian, like me, 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 I'm the parent. You should be listening to me because I know best. I know that for you, it might be a huge trigger to hear me talk like this. And please know, I'm not saying like, just let your kids do whatever, whenever, let them eat ice cream in the middle of the night and for breakfast if they want. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that Whenever you notice you're fighting for control, it's because your kids are feeling you're taking too much of control of their lives. So what might be a solution specifically for mealtimes is giving them choices. Not too many so that you don't feel like a resentful people pleaser because you spend four hours cooking and then they end up eating one small green peas, <laughs> right? Not talking about that. But at meal time, and even more importantly, in all of the other areas of their lives, because this is what well, it's often connected that you don't even see it. You're thinking about, okay, but I'm giving them options what to eat and I'm giving them options how much and it's still not working. Well, then look wider, look bigger than that. Where else in their lives do they have, could they have more freedom to decide. Silly examples, and I use that, a, but silly. Well, hi judge, my judge in my head, <laughs> labeling it silly. I don't think it's silly. But a few examples from my own life where I found out that it worked really well with my daughter. So we actually never even got to 
food struggles in our home because she didn't feel like she had to fight for her independence. But since she was one year old, she was sleeping in a mattress on the floor so that she could get in and out of her bed. She didn't need any assistance, like no jail bed, basically. She always had access all over our apartment, never any gates. Since she was two years old, she had her own, they call it armoire in French, um, like a wardrobe closet with where she had the space to put her clothes. And again, age appropriate. I didn't give her all of her clothes in the closet because then, of course, she would take it all out and like one big mess. No, age appropriate. So at the age of two, I gave her always like two or three choices. So if it was summer, she had there two shorts, one skirt and three t-shirts and like three pairs of socks. If it was winter, on top of that, she had like long pants, of course, and like two, two coats she could choose from. Always only two or three. When they are two or three years old, give them two or three choices. Not too much, because otherwise they would be overwhelmed. And if they would end up taking like everything out of the closet, then it would take you one hour to clean up. We don't want that. So age appropriate, small damage, like do damage control, because in case <laughs> they abuse it before they learn how to respect it, you must be ready to carry the consequences of them making a mess. But throughout all these situations like this, everything was at her level. She had her little plastic cup uh, with her little like, cutlery and everything accessible to her already at the age of two with, um, with fruits at her level so that whenever she was hungry in the afternoon, she could take a piece of fruit and she could bring it to me like, hey, mommy, help me peel or whatever. Or she was even trying to do it herself <laughs> so that she when she w was feeling like I'm hungry or I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it like I would like to taste this or I would like to try and eat this, she could. It was accessible, okay? At appropriate amount, okay? Limiting any damage that could happen, <laughs> everything accessible at her level and her having the freedom and being taught also how to respect that freedom mm -hmm. because the freedom for a child comes with boundaries, Freedom doesn't mean she could take that banana and smash it and, and like splash it over the wall and make a mess. When you give freedom, we also teach respect and boundaries that come with it. So when I saw her playing with the food in a way that I didn't like, then I got curious. Well, I see you smashing things. So do you want to play with a Play-Doh? Because banana, you can smash a little bit in your fingers, but primarily banana is for eating not for smashing it all over the table. You feel like squeezing and putting things all over the table. Well, then let's put a cloth over the table and here's your Play-Doh. See what I mean? Okay. So always getting curious what's underneath the, uh, the symptoms, underneath what your child is showing you that they are not having and feel that need. Very often when kids are fighting you with control, it means they don't have, they don't feel empowered enough. They feel like they do not have enough control and decision-making power in their lives. They are like your puppets. You're pushing them, now get here, then, then get, get there and no no's because we are already late and this is what you should wear and this is what you should eat right now and this is the time slot and you're not doing it and I'm going to shout at you and yell at you and sque squeeze it in your throat because you cannot be starving. Try a different approach, yeah? So, unpacking it. If your child is saying no, then especially because you push them in every other area of, your li of their lives, you control every other aspect and timing and choices, you are the one who decides, then usually food is naturally the only place they have control over. Okay, young or big even the adults. This is why I was mentioning at the beginning, even anorexia, bulimia, if you look underneath those individuals who are suffering from those disorders, it is because they experienced chaos in their world. They experienced situations happening in their lives that they were not in control of. They didn't like it. They didn't enjoy the outcomes of those situations. They felt like their life was going and they had no way of changing that. So then what they put in their mouth became the only thing they can control. What they put in their system, what they eat and what they drink. That's why they started getting hyper-focused on 
controlling every single aspect of that of that choice okay and that's the same thing for our kids they can't tell you no when you're pushing them to go to bed they can't tell you no because they don't want to go to school but they can tell you no i don't like green peas or spinach because if you put it through their mouth they vomit it out you get mad so yeah you will not be happy but at least they had their say they could say no because then eventually if they do it often enough you stop pushing them you stop forcing them because you who likes looking at vomiting kids and wasting time preparing food that they are not liking anyways so eventually the parents give up okay so this confirms then back to the kids like yeah my strategy it's kind of like blah, nauseating but it works at least this is one place when i can say no and i'm listened to i'm heard at least this one is working Make sense? Want to become that calm, loving, safe parent for your kids that you wish you had growing up? Then join me for the upcoming live training on Thursday where I'm going to give you two keys that you need to be able to set healthy boundaries with calm. Because if you're listening to this podcast, most likely you grew up being a good girl or a good boy. And so now you're struggling with yelling getting angry at your kids and shouting and blaming them for not being respectful enough not being cooperative enough but you see how that's damaging them and their spirits but on the other hand what is what other options do you have like you don't want them to grow up being disrespectful manipulative little narcissistic people right so where is that balance how do you raise strong resilient kids with healthy confidence who are respectful and cooperative enough how to do that if you'd like to find out grab the registration link sign up for free and i'm going to see you on thursday so this is why you need to understand meal times if your kids are fighting it's not even about the food it's about the control it's about how much you let them do <laughs> how much freedom you give them throughout their lives okay makes sense okay so now practically now that you understand what is the need underneath why are your kids fighting you for control it's because they don't feel they have enough of it they don't feel like they have enough of freedom and decision making in their own lives now how do we practically change that power struggle into happy positive meal times and hopefully how can you support your child in being more curious and open about trying new foods how do you do that by taking your control out taking your control back okay you can see how you want to make that specifically work for you and your family ideally it would mean you always give a couple of options not too many i'm not saying you should be cooking for hours and hours just to uh, create a buffet that your child will hopefully like bite three pieces from no get your people pleaser out of the way do what's feasible for you in terms of your time and effort you want to put in it without feeling resentful be prepared that maybe they will not eat any of that and you will be fine with that you're not going to force them okay so you can be sneaking in a couple of foods that they like but always also new foods you can be making dinners or meals with completely new food that you don't you know they don't like but that normally there's nothing wrong about it like you're not going to force them eat just spinach with broccoli like there will be always some different options on the plate as well right so don't be afraid to to put those options there to put those healthy meals inside and then control off hands off let your children decide what and how much they want to eat within a given time limit not saying that you should be sitting there with a stopwatch but if and that this is general recommendation of like coaching coaching parenting coaches and nutritionists the general recommendation i remember was about like 25 minutes 30 minutes maximum if the meal time if if the process of eating takes longer than 30 minutes like it's already too long okay so if it reaches that point give them the time they need of course if they are eating but if they are just playing with the food and if it's obvious that they don't want to eat it <laughs> then stop the madness right it makes no sense to let them 
That was our childhood trauma. Do you remember? Did you have that too? Like, you're going to sit here until you finish and clean your plate because you should be grateful there are so many kids in Africa who have nothing to eat and you here have such a beautiful thing. And what would I have wished for when I was a kid and we had to walk over three kilometers in a field to get la 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 all these stories, right? You don't want to do the same to your kids as your parents and grandparents did to you, right? Because it didn't have any effect anyways. So, control of... Check if it's taking more than half an hour, it makes no sense. Out of the table, finished. And then natural consequences, okay? Not punishment, but natural consequence. My dear child, this was the dinner. You didn't want to eat much of it. Well, natural consequence, you'll be hungry. There's no dessert. There's no substitution. No, you cannot eat piece of bread instead. No, this was the dinner. You didn't like it, fine, good for me. Okay for me, like <laughs> I had my food. You're going to wait till the next meal, okay? No, like, exceptional snacks in between or anything. You, This is the most important piece. You need to stick to it. Once you set boundaries, you will keep them with consistency. If you say the next meal will be only breakfast at 7 o'clock, you're not going to give them some snack or yogurt before going to sleep. No, 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 mommy. Because that's what would teach your kids... It's okay when mommy says no, because she will eventually say yes, like one hour later. It's okay to keep nagging and asking and complaining. This is where it will be most tough for you. Stick with your own rules consistently. All right. So that then it teaches your kids those boundaries and it teaches them you're serious about it. And it teaches them I'm in control. I have a choice. Because then they will understand, okay, I don't like this dinner. Well, then I know that my only other choice, like option to eat will be in the morning for breakfast. Okay. Is it still worth it for me? <laughs> Is it worth it eating the broccoli or do I rather go hungry? Okay, I'll be hungry. Fine. And then again, for breakfast, there are some healthy choices, some things they like. Okay, how can you adapt, ad adopt it, adapt it? So that there's always something that they could like, but there's al always like a couple of new foods with no pressure, no pressure, no expectations, no pushing, no comparing their, them to their siblings. Like, look, your sister, how fast she's eating and how well she did it. And she'll be so strong and you'll be so weak and small forever. And like, na 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 na. No comparing siblings, no comparing them to their friends. No, <laughs> try to check your own self-talk because how you talk to yourself in your head, that's most likely how you talk about you and about food in front of your kids as well. If you have any limiting beliefs about food, like this will make me fat or this is too much of that or blah, blah, blah. Do really clean that up because that shows up in your attitude and your kids are watching what's on your plate. If they see daddy eating just meat and french fries, no broccoli, they will not want to eat any broccoli. <laughs> so get everybody, all the adults around the table, get them on the same page as well. There's no talking about, I don't like this, I don't want this. <laughs> if you want your kids eat veggies, the best way to get them eat veggies is if they see you with a full plate. Like so often, and okay, this is one bonus tip extra, okay? When I wanted my daughter to try something that I know that usually kids don't like, like uh, beetroot or uh, spinach or the, they call it courgette. How do you know? How do you call it in English? I don't know. Like this, it's not the pumpkin pie, the orange one, but the green one that looks like a bigger cucumber that doesn't have much taste really. Anyways, when I want my daughter to taste new veggies that I know kids normally don't like, I would put it on my plate and on my place at the table in advance. Yeah, as I keep preparing her plate in the kitchen, I just put it without saying anything. I put it on my place so that it's clear it's my food and I leave it there. I go back to the kitchen and I keep preparing the rest of the meals. I can't tell you how often she went in secretly trying to take a few bites and because it was like forbidden this is mommy's food she was like tasting it she was like oh yeah this is good 
<laughs> and then she ended up eating <laughs> my food without me even have to tell her like nah good try this is healthy this is yummy because i have it like no no no, no. this is like the <laughs> mental ninja strategy i know that if i want my daughter to eat something she wouldn't normally taste i just leave it there because she knows yeah, she knows I'm having like lots of veggies and lots of healthy stuff, but she knows I wouldn't eat anything that doesn't taste good. She's always, <laughs> she, on the contrary, she's always thinking like what mommy and daddy have on their plates is usually better than mine. <laughs> so let me try if it's something new and I don't know that. So try have fun <laughs> with strategies like this. It's all about really pressure off, pressure off. All right. No child in the developed world, like no child has ever starved because they were malnourished, because their parents were giving them food and the kids refused to eat. Like no child has ever died of that. Okay. That's just your hyper vigilant judge victim voices in your head who are telling you, no, but they need to eat. They cannot go to sleep hungry. But if you force the food in them anyways, and they vomit it anyways, like how much food do they have in their stomach and how healthy is that, right? So please stop force feeding, stop pushing them to sit at the table for one hour, two hours, crying, huge drama just to force one broccoli in, please. See what that's doing in long term, it's doing more damage than help, all right? Control off, hands off. This is the choice, my dear child, your decision, Eating in half an hour if it's taking too much. Food is going out. Are you throwing your food around yourself? Are you more playing with it than eating? Okay, that gives me the signal. So it means you're not hungry anymore. All right, food is going away. You can bring your plate to the kitchen. We are done. And let's play with something that you can throw. <laughs> let's play with something you can squish. Let's go play with water. If you want to play and want to get dirty and wet, let's go play with that. This is food. This is mealtime. You don't want to eat, you're not hungry anymore, let's take it away. The next meal will be at this time and until then, you're on your own, okay? And you stick with it. You do not budge, you do not give any extra snacks, you do not give in to feeling guilty and sorry for them. And no, 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 okay? And get your partner on board. Sounds good? Let me know how this went for you. Usually what we are hearing with all of the moms inside the group, this works like a charm. It takes a moment to the kids to realize, like, is she really serious? Like, really? I can go to sleep hungry? Awesome! <laughs> and then when there's no pressure, they just start getting curious naturally. And slowly, 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 no expectations about time, but slowly they start tasting new things. They start having fun because the mealtime, it's no longer like this dreaded, stressful, yelling event. But it really becomes what it should be, which is about family connecting, talking about your day, everybody relaxing, having a nice time, eating, eating great food. That's what it can be for you too. So give it a try. If you need to put your husband on board, <laughs> ask them, how did it go for them? How did it feel to be punished for not eating? Because I still remember, oh my goodness, from my childhood, especially with my grandparents, it was really tough. They're really punishing us for not eating the food they thought, like, yeah, we were so ungrateful as kids. Like, yeah, it was traumatizing a little bit. Let your husband think back about his experiences if he's not fully on board. Try to create something more positive for our children. More freedom to them. Not without boundaries. Remember, I talked about boundaries. They need boundaries with natural consequences, but no punishments, no comparing, no pushing, no forcing. Good. Give it a try. Let me know how it went. Take care, Supermom. If you like this episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button <laughs> and click on the notification bell so that you'll be notified when the new episodes are out.